introduction. I can't wait to hear the speaker myself. I'm a physicist. We physicists are the gatekeepers of science. We're the ones who make sure that the integrity of science remains intact. We can smell a fake and a fraud a mile away. So one day, I get this press release from Toyota saying that they are going to debut the world's first commercial hydrogen fuel cell car. And I say to myself, no way. Come on, give me a break. Where's the catch? Where's the catch? I mean, if you think about it, in the physics world, we have a joke. And that is, every 20 years, somebody announces that 20 years from now, we'll have the first commercially available hydrogen fuel cell car. Well, I began to read the fine print. And then I began to see something different. There was something different with this press release. The press release said that this car has a range of 300 miles, an acceleration of 60 miles per hour in nine seconds, refueling time three to five minutes, and my jaw hit the floor. And I began to realize, hey, this could be the dawn of the age of hydrogen. You know, historians have a word for it. When the old world order begins to break apart, when nations begin to collapse and there's a new world order emerging, historians say that we are, quote, present at the creation. And that's where we are today, present at the creation of a new age, the new age of hydrogen. We're leaving the age of hydrocarbons and entering the age of hydrogen to create a hydrogen non-polluting society. Take a look at world history. Back in ancient times, civilizations used fire and wood to release energy. And then 200 years ago, all of a sudden we exploited the power of coal. That set into motion steam power and the industrial revolution. All of a sudden we had locomotives that could span continents in a matter of days, not centuries. And then, barely a hundred years ago, we enter the age of oil. And now, we are entering the age of hydrogen. A new society is being built right before our eyes. Now, I'm a physicist. If you were to create a wish list, a wish list for the perfect car, what would the ingredients be for the perfect car? One, you would want a fuel source based on an element that's the most plentiful in the universe, and that is hydrogen. 75% of the universe is made out of hydrogen. You want to see hydrogen? Go outside, take a look at the stars, the galaxies, the sun. Hydrogen is the most plentiful substance in the universe. And contrast that now to oil, black gold, one of the rarest of substances on the planet Earth, nations will kill to secure supplies of oil. Many historians have said that many of the forces that led to World War II and the death of tens of millions of innocents were driven in part by the desire to secure supplies of oil. And think of oil today. Oil is found perhaps in the most dangerous, volatile, unstable areas of the planet Earth. So the first ingredient of the perfect car, fuel based on the most plentiful element in the universe. Second, you want a car with as few moving parts as possible. Let me ask you a question. Why do cars break down? A simple question. Because cars have moving parts. You have pistons and cylinders, all sorts of moving parts, and you have wear and tear. Well, in a hydrogen fuel cell car, the engine has no moving parts, whatsoever. And number three, the third ingredient in the perfect car is the perfect car creates waste, exhaust, that's so pure, that's so refined, you can practically drink it. And that's what the hydrogen fuel cell car is all about. You take hydrogen, you take oxygen, you combine them, and you create water plus energy with no waste products, other than water. Now, think of what comes out of exhaust in cars. I was speaking in Shanghai, 
just a few months ago. And as the plane landed in the Shanghai airport, all of a sudden your eyes began to water and sting because of all the pollution. And then when you opened the door and went outside, you could take a butter knife and cut right through the air pollution in Shanghai. That's how bad it is. And I was watching TV the other day. There was an old rerun of Star Trek. And the crew of the Enterprise lands on a primitive planet, a planet that's still mired in 20th century technology. And Spock analyzes the atmosphere. And Spock says, Captain, this atmosphere is full of toxic, unburned hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide. And then Captain <coughs> says, oh, what does that mean? And then Spock says, that means smog. A word that disappeared from the English language in our 21st century. So let me make a prediction. The word smog is going to disappear from the dictionary because we're going to be entering a new age. And the last ingredient in our wish list is that it be commercial, commercial friendly, friendly to the consumer. Usually hydrogen cars are priced at hundreds of thousands of dollars, way beyond the pocketbook of the average person. But this car, we're talking about in the neighborhood of 50,000. And as mass production, competition, economies of scale begin to kick in, as governments begin to subsidize the creation of refueling stations, you're going to see that cost drop even further. And so we're seeing here that the wish list of the perfect car, hey, you could be staring at it. Now, take a look at what changed my mind. I was a skeptic. I said to myself, hey, come on, give me a break. Hydrogen refueling cars? What made the difference for me? When I read that press release, I began to realize that the engineers at Toyota have assembled critical mass, all the various ingredients to create critical mass to create a hydrogen society. The first ingredient for this critical mass is range. This car can go 300 miles in one refueling. Now think about that. Look up the electric car, the hydrogen car, on the internet. And you see the cynics. The cynics saying, ha, hydrogen cars, electric cars, where are you going to find them? You're going to find them in only two places. One, the golf course, where you have golf carts powered by electricity and hydrogen, <coughs> and two, to go to your neighborhood grocery store, and that's about it. But this car can compete right on the highways with gasoline-fired cars. Second of all, acceleration. When you put the foot to the pedal, you want to get that room acceleration. You want to feel Newton's second law of motion. You want to feel that acceleration being pushed into your car <coughs> when you hit the accelerator. That's hard to do with electric batteries, but hey, there's an electric battery in this car. It can achieve 60 miles per hour in nine seconds, comparable to what you get out there on the highways. And then, who wants to have to plug in your electric battery in the morning and then take back your car in the afternoon? It takes hours to refuel an electric battery. I'm all for this because it's a vast improvement over gasoline, but it is a nuisance. This car, this car can recharge itself in three to five minutes. Again, comparable to what you find out there in the field. And now you may say to yourself, okay, okay, I'm sold. But what's the catch? What do the cynics say about this car? Well, the cynics point out two things. First of all, you need an infrastructure. An infrastructure based on hydrogen. And second of all, what about safety? Isn't hydrogen volatile? Well, let's take them one at a time. If you were to go into a time machine and get a newspaper, a newspaper from 100 years ago, and read the editorials that they wrote about hydrogen, and about gasoline, you would say that these editorial writers hated gasoline. They pointed out two defects with gasoline. First, you would have to have a gasoline pump every other block. And hey, isn't that ridiculous? I mean, a hydrogen refueling station every few blocks, and gasoline is volatile. Think of all the people that are going to be burned alive in car accidents. <coughs> well, we live with it, 
because that's the hydrocarbon world that we live in today. And now let's talk about the hydrogen society of the future. Remember Exxon Valdez? Remember that horrible oil spill in Alaska? There was an image seared into our collective memory. And that image was of birds. Birds with sticky, gooey oil saturating its wings. Birds which couldn't fly anymore because of all the oil that leaked out of Exxon Valdez. And remember the deep water horizon spill in the Gulf of Mexico? Yet another image was seared into our collective mind. And that image was of a leaky pipe oozing out, oozing out thousands of barrels of sticky oil right into people's backyard, right onto beaches of the Gulf of Mexico, getting right into the food chain. Well, hydrogen is different. You see, hydrogen in an accident, yes, is volatile, but it dissipates. It's a gas. <coughs> it doesn't stick around. It doesn't gum up the wings of birds. It doesn't pollute the Gulf of Mexico. We're talking about an entirely different animal. And remember, we've had 150 years, 150 years of experience dealing with hydrogen. And this car, the Toyota engineers have tested the car under accident crash conditions. Hydrogen is no mystery. We've lived with hydrogen for decades, 150 years of testing with hydrogen. We've crashed hydrogen cars. And as I said before, hydrogen simply dissipates into the environment. What more could you want of a fuel packed with energy that is simply non-polluting? And let me say one more thing. Over 100 years ago, we had Thomas Edison and Henry Ford who were actually good friends. They would take each, out to, take each other out to dinner. Their families knew each other socially. You'd think they'd be rivals. No, they collaborated. But one day, one day Edison and Ford made a bet. And that bet was, what would be the energy source that would drive the automotive future? Edison bet on the battery. Ford bet on gasoline. Well, what did the newspaper say? The new paper said, no contest. Edison's going to win because gasoline, we all know that you're not going to have a refueling station every other block. We all know about the explosive nature of gasoline. Well, history has shown that collaboration, perhaps, is the key. Today, yes, we do have hydrocarbon cars, but we also have hybrid cars, like the Prius. We also have electric cars, and now the hydrogen car. So we're talking about a game changer. Game changer that's going to change the landscape, not just of our lives, but perhaps the world of politics, the world of energy. And energy is at the very basis of all of modern society. So ladies and gentlemen, what I'm saying today is we are present at the creation, the creation of a hydrogen society a non-polluting society that's going to perhaps one day vanquish global warming, the smog that gets into the atmosphere, the problems associated with the burning of hydrocarbon fuels. And now I'd like to introduce someone who's going to take you into the world of this hydrogen-fueled car, and that is Bob Carter of Toyota Motors.